Hello guys and welcome to today's session. Today we are going to talk about Android enrollment. So guys, I have been waiting to, to do this uh, since very long and this is going to be relatively a longer one since we have so much to talk about, including the demos. So let's just start it off and let's just first take a look over what we have in the agenda today. So uh, first we are going to talk about uh, what Android management is via MDM and we'll be focusing obviously on Intune and we'll be talking about the various ways we can manage an Android device using Intune. There are some flavors to it. We'll take a look over that. We'll understand what are the various ways of doing it and the different types of Android enrollment. And we'll also discuss the various Android variants that we have nowadays in the market. So gone are the days wherein we just had one Android or stock OS, right? Now we have got so many different uh, OEMs and all of most of them, not all of them, customize the OS and then bring a new OS into the market, which makes our lives that much harder to manage those devices because all of these customized OS have different experience that we see. So we'll be talking about that. Then we will be uh, uh, discussing what device admin is in detail. Then we'll talk about what led to the demise of device admin, as you're aware that uh, uh, starting this year, 2020, or I, I think late uh, 2019, Google deprecated the support of Android device admin for OS uh, Android 10 and above, which uses the API 29. So uh, we'll be talking about why that happened, what led to the deprecation of Android device admin? What is it that we could not do or that we could not leverage using device admin? Then we'll talk about what Android enterprises, also known as Android for work. We'll talk about what are the benefits of making use of Android enterprise, how this is different, how this is better from device admin. We will talk about the various subcategories of Android enterprise enrollment, which is work profile, Kobu, Kosu and Cope. Then we'll discuss an enrollment flow. We'll discuss what exactly happens when we try to enroll an Android device and what is the communication flow. So if, you are make, if I'm making a policy in Intune, how is that policy coming down to the Android device? In case of iOS, if you guys remember, we have something called an APNS, right? So Intune speaks with the APNS and APNS uh, provides those notification to the devices. How exactly does it happen in case of Android? We'll talk about that. Then we'll talk about logs. I will be showing you guys a company portal log analysis of a company portal log from an Android device and showing you everything that happens during the enrollment as well as after enrollment when the policy comes down, as well as an application when an application comes down. Then we'll be talking about what battery optimization is. I really wanted to include that into the agenda because recently, given the different variants of Android that we have, we have been seeing a lot of issues with uh, uh, which, which are related to uh, MAM or application uh, behavior, especially which deals with the battery optimization feature. So we'll be talking about what app battery optimization is. We'll be talking about something called test DPC. Uh, and there is a bonus for you guys. Uh, so if you guys are aware, we, which we are uh, obviously going to see uh, moving forward in the next slides, that when we do a Kobo or a Kosu enrollment, we actually have to scan a QR code. So we are going to uh, decode that QR code and see what exactly is there inside of the QR code. And is there a possibility to uh, uh, make any changes to the QR code and how, to, how the QR code is generated and we'll talk all of that. Once that is done, then obviously we'll do a demo. And today in the demo, I will try to cover a actual enrollment of an Android device by enrolling it into device admin, as well as by enrolling it into Kosu and Kobu. And I'll show you as well as work profile. And I'll show you what is the difference that a what is the difference in user experience in all these cases from uh, end users perspective, as well as how an ad how we as an admin are supposed to set it up at the portal end. Okay. All right. So we have got lots to cover. So let's just get started. Uh, the first thing I wanted to show you guys is the evolution of Android and the different operating system that we have had until now. So you can see that we have had uh, a bunch of them and uh, starting from 1.0 and right now we are at Android 10, I believe, uh, which is uh, 
Android, if you'd call it Android Q, I, 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 I don't think it follows the same naming convention. So we are calling it Android 10, released on September 13, 2019. So, uh, 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 all right. And this is what I was talking about, guys, in the next slide, uh, the customizations that are possible. So, I mean, if we compare Android with iOS, the 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 same logic actually does not apply because in case of iOS there is just one or I mean there just one organization which is manufacturing the operating system as well as the devices. Uh, however, that is not the case in case of Android because Android is a open source code, right? So different organizations like Xiaomi has its own uh, oper customized operating system a version of Android called MIUI. Vivo has its own version called FontTouch. Oppo has its own version, ColorOS. HTC has its own version. And well, obviously stock Android is are the devices like Google Pixel, which are running with a, a pure or vanilla version of Android, wherein no uh, APIs which were present in the source code have been uh, changed. So the point that I'm trying to make here, guys, is given that Android is a... I mean, Android is customizable so heavily by the vendors, the OEMs customize it the way they want it to. However, we as a MDM have to ensure that all these devices, irrespective of the customization that is present, are managed by Intune, right? So we will see how we exactly do that. And we will also talk about the challenges that we have given that these are running on their customized version of Android and not the stock Android OS. Okay. All right. So guys, this is the first thing that I wanted to discuss and I wanted to show you guys the different ways and the, these are the different ways via which a Android device can be enrolled to Intune. This is like a thousand feet overview. If I have an Android device in my hand, the Android device can be enrolled as Android device admin if the operating system version is below 10 or it can be enrolled as Android Enterprise if the operating system version is above 5.1. Okay, so we'll talk about what is the difference in detail between these two. But for now, just know that we have got two possible routes to take either Android device admin or Android Enterprise Android device admin also we refer to it as the legacy method and Android enterprise also known as Android for work is the modern method. Now, when we talk about Android enterprise or Android for work, there are different flavors or different variants present inside of it as well. So more often than not, if I want to enroll a device as Android enterprise, the first thing that would, the first uh, filter that will have to apply or the first uh, the first decision that we'll have to take is whether the device that we are trying to enroll, whether that is a company owned device or a user's personal device. If it's a user's personal device in the route that we usually take is the left one, which says, which, which is enrolling the device as a work profile. If it is a company owned device, then we enroll it as a Kosu or a Kobu. So, I mean, the intent of this slide is just to familiarize ourselves with the with these terms, first of all. What is Android device admin? What is Android enterprise? What is work profile? What is Kosu? What is Kobu? We'll go into, we'll do a deep dive. We will see all the needed screenshots. We'll see the demo later on. But for now, we just need to know that if I'm if I have an Android device, I have to enroll that Android device to any MDM, not just Intune. It can either be enrolled as a device admin, which is the legacy method, or it can be enrolled as Android Enterprise. Within Android Enterprise, the user can choose whether he or the admin can choose whether the device would be enrolled as a work profile or whether it would be enrolled as a device owner, that is Kosu or Kobu. Okay. All right, so well, just a little background regarding Android devices. So Android originally introduced the support for management of mobile devices with the version Android 2.2. Okay, so 2.2 uh, 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 that is uh, uh, for you, which was released in 2010. Since then, so the ones that you see in, uh, let me just get my marker here. So these ones are the ones, uh, starting Android 2.2 are the ones wherein uh, Android started facilitating enrollment of devices to any MDM. Okay. 
and with 5.0 you can see that the color changes which signifies that these support android enterprise enrollment however the previous ones only support the device administrator ones right all right so uh, uh, intune supports enrollment of android devices from 4.0 okay so if you have a device running with version ice cream sandwich or above then that device can be enrolled to intune okay so this is our starting point from intune's perspective okay all right cool uh now let's just talk about what device admin is or the first one so first i'll give you guys a thousand feet overview of what device admin is and what android enterprise is and then we'll probably do a deep down and we'll try to understand what is the difference between each of them so guys we can think of it in this way so uh, 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 all right so let's just say that we have two devices both are android device and let's just say they are android version 7 okay so in the android device admin what happened was conventionally not only intune any mdm we were managing the entire device okay so if we were managing the entire device we had an option of doing a factory reset of the entire device or wiping the entire device and obviously the in in all the cases the customers were not very happy given that the entire device was being managed by an organization if the device was personally owned okay in android enterprise what we do we create a container within the device a hypothetical container and all the applications all the work related data that is being pushed to the device by an mdm in this case by intune resides within this container and this is an encrypted container so the advantage is intune as an mdm has visibility onto this container only and not outside this container so this container is something which you can call as the corporate container and this is the personal container okay so we are managing this container only and not the entire device the advantage the advantage is obviously that uh, the user will be more happy with this approach given that uh, the admin does not have visibility onto the entire device of the uh, of the individual okay all right so this is one of the uh, differences i mean this is not the only difference but one of the difference there are many other differences as well which we will talk about later i mean the android device admin had some had a lot of drawbacks had a lot of flaws which we faced in android enterprise but the thousand feet view of this is in android device admin we were managing the entire device however in android enterprise specifically specifically in byod kind of a scenario we have an option of creating a container in the device we are doing containerization of data we are creating a container we are managing that container when the device is no longer being managed we are removing that container and we don't have any visibility onto the personal space of the user okay the differences will actually make more sense when we do the actual demo but for now just know that uh, this is what it exists okay all right cool so uh well obviously as we spoke uh intune supports uh mdm enrollment from 4.0 okay so android device admin let's just take a let's just take a first look over these screenshots on how an android enrollment happens so irrespective of whether you are enrolling an android device as a device admin or whether you are enrolling it as a android enterprise you have to install an agent on the device i believe you guys are already aware there is an agent called company portal application which needs to be installed we don't need to necessarily install an agent in case of windows but in case of android and ios the agent is needed okay this is that agent in case you are uh, you, you haven't had a chance to work with android enrollment earlier intune company portal is the agent that you have to install uh, and that you have to download and install from the uh, play store it's publicly available and for free once you uh, install this you have to sign into it so you have to sign into it using your uh, in using your uh, you don't need an admin credential obviously using a user's credential and the user should have an intune license assigned to him that's the only prereq here 
Okay, so I'm, I'm logging into this device using a credential from either on-prem or on the Azure. It has a credential. Once I log in, the first, the very first thing that you see here, it says that uh, these are the two things that is going to happen. And you are going to first get your device managed. Once your device is managed, that is once your device is enrolled to Intune, there are a few settings which will be updated. By these settings, it actually means the device configuration profiles, if any, which has been deployed to this device. So these two are currently in grayed out, meaning that they have not been completed. So I have to start by clicking on begin over here. When you click on begin and this and over here, we are doing the Android device admin, the legacy enrollment. Okay. So it is actually telling you that you are, you are going to allow permissions to the device admin and you have to click on next over here. And it says that Everything about Intune is the name of my tenant. So it says that the admin can see all these things in the device. It can see the model, serial number, operating system, app name, zone, or device name, manufacturer. Uh, these are the, so Intune actually runs an inventory. Uh, and these, when, the, when it runs these inventories, it collects a whole bunch of information. These being few of them. There are some things which it doesn't collect and uh, we are explicitly telling them to the end user even though they usually end up just clicking on next next continue finish we are explicitly telling it to the end user that this is something that we are not managing and those are your location your call web history your text messages contacts passwords camera roll etc so the end user just has to click on continue and then it we also specifically tell the user that this is what we are going, this is what we are, you are allowing us to do. So if you're enrolling a device with the organization, you are giving me the capability of erasing all the data if the need be, changing the screen lock, changing, setting password rules, device compliance or configuration, monitor unlock attempts, locking the screen, uh, setting device security, hardware restrictions, browser restrictions, device admin kiosk mode, We'll talk about what kiosk mode is, uh, managing certificates, de uh, deploying certificates and Wi-Fi profiles, and then disabling camera, uh, setting up encryption, managing the application, Bluetooth, and configuring and managing Wi-Fi profiles. So, I mean, there are a whole bunch of things that we can do if a device is getting enrolled. And since the end user is enrolling the device, we are assuming that he might or might not be aware of the things that that can be monitored or administered by an admin once a device is being enrolled. So we explicitly tell them that this is what we are going to do. Okay. And the end user has to click on activate over here. So if the end user clicks on activate, what happens? The device gets Azure AD registered and it gets enrolled to Intune. Right. So device is going, so it says that uh, registering your device, adding device to company portal and once it is done, you will be able to see an entry of this device in the Azure portal as well as in the Intune portal. Okay, if it is a Samsung Knox device, then you see a additional prompt over here and you have to click on I accept. Otherwise, this prompt will be bypassed and you won't be really seeing this, uh, seeing this uh, screen. Okay, so then it tells you finish setting up your device and once the device is enrolled, if you go into the devices section of the company portal, you will be able to see all the devices that are enrolled by Intune, enrolled to Intune by this user. And it follows this naming convention if it is an Android device. It says the name of the device followed by the operating system, followed by the timestamp of when the device was enrolled. And once it is enrolled, you can see that all these two options are showing up as green, which earlier were grayed out. So now the device is managed and the settings have been updated. And I, you also have an option of uh, creating something called a device category. So what happens is when the end user is enrolling the device, he has to select one of those categories. And this is nothing but this is just the tag, if you would call it. And when the device is enrolled, when you see this device in the portal, you can see that each device has a tag right next to it. So if I, if during the enrollment, I select everything about Intune, proprietorship. So this device is going to have this tag right next to it. So if you have departments like HR, finance, IT, then if you, uh, if the end user are selecting the appropriate uh, uh, device category during enrollment, it's, it makes the management of the devices easier because the user, because the admin, when he sees in the portal, 
he can see that okay this device is belonging to this category okay cool uh and this is how the device is visible in the portal so over here you can see the device is visible with the same name it is managed by the mdm ownership is personal uh compliance the device is compliant in the operating so this is what we have to look at in the operating system, you see that it says Android Device Administrator. So later on, when will we uh, enroll a device as Android Enterprise, we will see how different it looks and uh, what does it say over here? Does it say work profile or does it say something else? And then when we enroll a device as Kosu or Kobu, we will see that what uh, what we see over there and how is it different, okay? All right, and then it shows the last check-in time. All right, cool. So, uh, 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 all right. So this is what device admin is, right? In device admin, we are enrolling the device. Once the device is enrolled, then we have an ability of now the device is enrolled, right? So now, if I as an admin want to push an application, I can push that, and it will come up in this blade under the apps. If I'm pushing an application as available. If I'm pushing it as required, the app will be automatically installed in the device. I can push uh, app protection policy. I can push app configuration policy. I can push device compliance policy. I can push device configuration policy to this device now, right? But then what is wrong with this? We can, it seems that we can pretty much do everything we want to in this device admin. Then why was device admin actually deprecated? What was wrong in this approach? So this is what we have to find out. So the the main reason is uh, beyond the basic security policies that we can create uh, and beyond a simple email or a Wi-Fi profile that we can deploy, there is not much that we can do for a Android device admin. There is not, not many policies, not many kinds of policies that we can create and not many kinds of uh, uh, things that we can actually administer as an admin. Why was this the case? This was the case because when the device admin AP, because the device, what we are doing is we are making a policy, right? And that policy is uh, helping us administer something in the device. When I say the device, what I mean is an operating system in the device, right? So what happened was it was possible because in the operating system source code, there were some APIs which were exposed. And using those policies, we are we are leveraging those APIs. What happened was, in case of Android device admin, the APIs were not a mandate. So the APIs were present, but let's just say that there was an organization like Micromax or, well, I shouldn't really t be taking names, but let's just say that there was any organization which, there was any OEM which made its own device. And since the, APIs were not a standard and they were APIs were not mandatory. They skinned the operate, they skinned the operating system and they removed all those APIs. If they did that, then obviously we as a MDM cannot manage that device anymore because that functionality has been removed because the operating system has now been customized. Okay. That was the main reason. And well, obviously, as I said, OEMs, while, while the OEMs created their own variant of the operating system, Many, many a times they decided to omit the management APIs and have their own in-house integrated uh, APIs into the operating system source code. And once they did that, obviously the management of the device was not really, uh, uh, it, it wasn't that seamless. But what were the major drawbacks? And these were the major drawbacks of using Android device admin. As already stated in case of Android device admin, there was no separate container that we were creating in the device, right? We were managing the entire device. So again, not a very seamless solution for BYOD kind of a device. In Android enterprise, we created a specific container, a virtual container in the device. Everything we're pushing from the MDM is sitting in that container. We are encrypting that container and managing that container only. We don't have any visibility to anything going on outside of that container. Right. So separation of work con uh, work content from the personal content specif specifically for BYOD kind of a device. So this Android enterprise was uh, implemented initially keeping in mind BYOD kind of a devices. The second thing was distribution of business application through Google Play. 
So in case of Android Enterprise, uh, what which we will see later on, that only those applications can be installed by the end user in the device, in the work container of the device, which have been approved by the Intune admin beforehand. So the end user cannot go and install any application that he wants to from the managed Play Store. Therefore, the distribution of application through Google Play becomes uh, more streamlined. We have a ability of managing what the user can and cannot install, right? And using the managed Google Play, we can also distribute LOB applications. It is not just uh, the store applications, it can be LOB applications as well. We have uh, setting the pass, uh, setting the factory reset protection, which we can use to ensure that device remain managed and can be recovered when the employee leaves. So uh, that is one and also deployment of kiosk devices or fully managed devices. So right now, as I said that uh, the Android enterprise was uh, managed, uh, was implemented, keeping in mind BYOD kind of a device, but using Android enterprise, we can also uh, manage uh, uh, company owned devices as well, like Kosu or Kobu, which we will uh, see later on. And we also have a, a ability of deploying kiosk devices that is a, a corporate owned single use and encrypting the device. So in, uh, in case of Android enterprise enrollment, by default, whenever we are doing an Android enterprise enrollment, the device is going to be encrypted because I said that, as I said, there is going to be a work container, uh, a virtual work container being created in the device and that work container is encrypted, right? So the device is encrypted. We can separate the work data from the personal, uh, personal data. User can have two instances of the same application in the same device. So he can have outlook in the personal in, so let me just uh, 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 draw it in this way. So let's just say this was the device and this was the work container, right? So if the user installed Outlook application in the work container, this will be subjected to all the MAM policies which has been deployed to this application. The user can also install an Outlook application in the personal container. So this is a personal container and this is the corporate container. So he has Outlook 1 and Outlook 2 that is two instances of the same application in the same device. This uh, application instance is not managed. So he can configure this with his uh, personal account and this one is managed. So he will have to configure this with his uh, corporate account, which is subjected to MAM policy. Okay. Not necessarily it can be subjected to the MAM policy. So this, so he's having two instances of application, which he can use whichever one he wants to. Uh, depending upon his need, depending upon whether he wants to use a personal one or the corporate one. And this goes not only for Outlook, but for all the applications. However, if we compare this with a device admin kind of a device, we were managing the entire device, right? So we can have only one instance of Outlook. We cannot install Outlook again. Therefore, Outlook cannot be, Outlook can either be used for personal context or can be used for work context, but not both at the same point of time, right? So this is a major, uh, differentiation a differentiating factor okay all right uh well as i said with the introduction of android q that is android 10 which uses uh, the api level 29 the end user will no longer be able to enroll a device as a device admin okay uh, they can only be enrolled as android enterprise or android for work and this is a change coming from uh, Google, not from Microsoft. So irrespective of which MDM you are using, uh, the same uh, logic stands. All right. So now let's just talk about Android Enterprise uh, or Android for Work. So let me just quickly go back to the diagram, this one. So until now, what we have done is we have discussed what Android device admin is. And now we are going to discuss Android Enterprise, or also known as Android for Work. So as we have already discussed, Android enterprise can be divided into two parts. One is work profile, which is used for BYOD kind of a device. And one is device owner, which is used for COD kind of a device. And again, let me first give you a thousand feet overview of what is the difference between this and this. As I said, in case of Android enterprise, a work container is getting created in the device, right? So it's very simple. Let's just say this was a personal device. So as I said, Android Enterprise came into the market with uh, with BYOD kind of a device being the focus, right? 
So let's just say this is a personal device. What we did was we created a container in the personal device. We were calling this the corporate managed space and this was the personal space, right? So all the policies from Intune were coming down over here and we were managing this container only. All right. So very, very good approach for a BYOD kind of a device. The end user is happy because the admin cannot see this. This cannot be seen by the admin, but the admin can see this. Okay. And regulate this and manage this. Now let's just say that this device was not a uh, personal old, but this was a corporate device, right? So obviously if it is a corporate device, then we wouldn't want any personal space in the corporate device, right? Because it is provided by the organization. I don't want any personal space in the device. I want to manage the entire device. So think about a scenario wherein we have this setup only, but we are shrinking the personal space to zero and expanding the corporate space to maximum. So this is shrinked and this is expanded. So what it means is there is no personal space. The personal space container is shrinked to zero and the entire space has been, uh, has been engulfed, if you would call it by the corporate container, right? So this kind of, uh, a setup is referred to as device owner because we are owning the device. That is what it is talking over here, the device owner. And let's just talk about another scenario wherein we have, we had the device, the device was enrolled, the personal space was shrunk to zero, the corporate space took the entire space and we configured this device in a way that this device was running with single or a couple of applications only. So let's just say we configured it in a way that using device restriction profile or something like that, that it could run only with app one and app two. Okay. So there is not much difference between the first one, the second one and the third one. In the first one, we had personal space and the corporate space, which with corporate space is the only thing being managed. In the second one, we shrank, we shrank the personal space to zero and expanded the corporate to maximum because we did not want any personal space because it was not a personal device. In the third one, we did the same thing, but we configured the device in a way that it, it could run only with couple of applications only like uh, a device that you would, uh, that you would see when you're going into a movie theater, you have a device that runs with like, let's just say book my show or a couple of applications only no other applications, right? So that is what, uh, uh, that is what is typically referred to as a kiosk device. So we referred to the first one as work profile, as you can see below in the diagram, it is this one, the work profile. We referred to this one as corporate owned business only this one. So we are calling this a fully managed or corporate owned business only. Well, it is self explanatory, right? The device is corporate owned. It is used for business purpose only. And it is fully managed, right? The third one, we referred to it as COSU corporate owned single use. So over here, you are seeing that it is corporate owned. It is also fully managed, but it is uh, configured to run with a single or a couple of applications only. So it is kind of a kiosk device. All right. This is a thousand feet overview of how the segregation is and how it is supposed to work. All right. So we will discuss each of them in detail and then we will uh, see the logs and then we will do a demo wherein we will enroll all the device and see the user experience. Okay. So first let's just talk about under Android enterprise. Let's just talk about the BYOD kind of a device or the work profile. So this is a screenshot which actually this is the containerization of data that I was talking about a, a virtual container that gets created, right? So this is a device owner wherein uh, we were managing the entire device. It had Excel, it had, uh, uh, let's just say Word or Outlook or something like that. And only one instance of that application in the device, right? Uh, it, this can either be used for work purpose or for personal purpose, but not for both at the same time. However, on the contrary, if you see over here, a device which has been enrolled as a work profile, you can see that there is a hypothetical work container and a hypothetical personal container. In the personal container, the user has something like uh, Facebook or any game or a, uh, any application that he wishes to. All, and he also has Excel, right? 
In the work container, obviously he has the company portal which he has used to enroll the device, but he also has another instance of Excel. So he's using this instance of Excel for his corporate related work and this instance of Excel for his personal related work. He's obviously the determination is made because he's signed into this using his corporate account and he has signed into this using his personal account, right? Meaning he has two instances of the same application in the same device. This one is encrypted. This one is protected. So we can configure a MAM policy in a way that the data copy would be allowed within the corporate container. So I can copy data from here to here, here to here and vice versa, but I cannot copy data from here to here. So that will be prohibited. Thereby, we are not leaking the data. The data is not going through with this boundary. So we have created this boundary and the data cannot bypass this boundary. This is not possible. Okay. And thereby, we are protecting the data. Okay. Cool. So let's just uh, look at it a little theoretically. So Android Enterprise debuted with uh, 5.0. That is the lollipop version and uh, as already discussed the work profile entirely sits in a separate container which is an encrypted part so when we are doing the android for android enterprise enrollment as a part of the enrollment itself we will be forced to do the uh, encryption of the device if the device is not encrypted already provides the person and the work application in the same app drawer the latter is indicated by a briefcase icon the policy that we enforce from Intune is limited to the work profile only and does not apply to the personal content of the device, right? The DLP policy, meaning the MAM policy, can prevent the transfer of enterprise information outside the work uh, profile. So this is what we were talking about. This is something which is not which is prohibited, which is not allowed. We can move the data from application 1 to 2 or 2 to 3, but we cannot move it from uh, an Excel application which is protected to an Excel application which is not protected, right? And this can be governed using a MAM policy. Should an enterprise wipe be issued, it simply removes the work profile and leaves all the user data untouched. So only this profile will be removed and you won't be able to see these applications anymore and the personal space will then expand and take the entire device and uh, nothing will be touched at the personal end, okay? Android, so what happened was Android after device admin with the advent of Android 5.0, Android made some changes to the source code of the application, okay? And they made the Android enterprise management APIs uh, and they integrated many more APIs into the source code which gives us more flexibility and they made it a mandatory. What it meant is, let's just say that there is a device and that device has the Android operating system, the basic one. Um, now let's just say I am a third party, I am an OEM, even if I take that device and if that device is running with Android version 5 or above, uh, I could obviously make some modifications to the source code, I could change the APIs, but even if I did, the, ex uh, the APIs which were introduced with Android version 5.0 or above, they still existed to an extent and the management was still better. So we had a consistent management behavior across the devices. All right. Cool. And well, a few other advantages, as I said, a fully lockdown mode is available, which is like the device owner that we spoke about. So the first one was Android Enterprise and then we had device under device owner, we had Kosu or Kobu. So the, that is a fully lockdown mode and a single user mode is also available. That is uh, the kiosk mode that we spoke about. And there is another mode called Coop. We will talk about it later. Currently, it is not supported by Intune. It might be in a later point of time. And we have a zero touch enrollment available as well. Okay. Benefits. Well, now I, I believe it should be self-explanatory. Android Enterprise is now a standard. Therefore, we have a consistent manageability. Uh, 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 we have a consistent manageability irrespective of the OEMs that, uh, that is used to. Who, who has customized the OS and is managing the device, right? Separate work container for BYOD. Again, this is repetitive ability to wipe only, wipe only the corporate data Two instances of the application, the same device, various management modes available like Kosu or Kobu, work data is encrypted and setting the factory reset protection. Okay. That being said, I mean, and now this, this is something that I'm speaking with my uh, personal experience. 
uh, that being said, even though, as I said, that the APIs are now a standard, there is not heavy customization that the OEMs can do. They still do it. They still integrate the Android operating system with their own APIs and remove the uh, original ones. And it still leads to some inconsistencies, right? In rare cases. So in some cases, let's just say that you are using a device from Oppo or Vivo or Poco. In those cases, you might see that there, you, you are facing some issues. While I mean, the policy is created correctly. It's working fine on all the devices, but you will get one odd device wherein the policy is not taking effect or the op or you are saying that uh, it is not behaving the way you, uh, you want it to behave. Even though the policy is absolutely fine, the device is checking in. So these inconsistencies are still there and that is because of the changes the OEMs are still making in the Android source code. But I would say that it is far more streamlined now than it was when we had a uh, Android device admin, right? So Google insists OEMs to use the Android inbuilt security feature instead of making changes to the uh, core kernel. But however, the OEMs end up making their own operating system version. So uh, I think let me just bring up this slide again. Yeah, so over here we were talking about the their custom OEMs, uh, their own version of the operating system by uh, most of the, not most of the, few of the OEMs who are making their own version of the operating system by making changes to the source code, right? All right. So, uh, 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 all right. So that being said, this is again a pictorial representation of uh, what the different models are. We have already spoken about this in case of BYOD. We were just having a container. The container was corporate managed and then we had an unmanaged space and the corporate owned. So this is corporate owned business only. So this is Kobo. So let me just call it C. O B O. Okay. So in this, as you see, the corporate managed workspace had this has shrunk to maximum. Uh, this, this has shrunk to minimum and this has expanded to maximum. Therefore, in this, there is no personal space. There is only corporate space, which has uh, um, expanded to the maximum and we are managing the entire device. So this one and this one is almost the same. That is Kobo and Kosu. In this also the personal space is not there, the entire is the uh, corporate space, but we have made the corporate space in a way that it is in a lockdown kiosk mode with uh, running with a couple of applications only which we whitelist. Other than that, the rest of the applications are um, not allowed to run. Okay, and then we have one more mode which is cope. We haven't spoken about this earlier, this is corporate owned personal enabled. Currently, it does not work with Intune. It might be, it might work later on. So let's just talk about what this is. It is related to the first one that is BYOD. So in this case, what happens is uh, we have a corporate managed work profile container wherein uh, we are uh, pushing down all the policies, all the applications, etc. from Intune. And the personal space is also work managed. So we are in a way managing the personal space as well as the corporate space. Currently it doesn't work with Intune with other MDMs. I suspect it might or it might not, right? Okay. So uh, uh, one more thing I wanted to, uh, I wanted to notify about. So in the corporate own single use kind of a device, very important point in Kosu kind of a device or a kiosk device, obviously the whole concept of a kiosk device is what? The, there is, it is not attributed to a user, right? I mean, as I gave you guys an example, a kiosk device or a corporate owned single use device is like, if you go into a movie theater and you see a device from wherein you can book your tickets, right? So it runs with a single application like book my show or something like that. So that device is kept for all the users to use. It is not attributed to a single user, right? So a Kosu device is also known as a kiosk device is not attributed to a user meaning there is no user device association, right? What that means is if there is no user device association in the device, meaning if the user is, if the device is not attributed to a single user, then you cannot apply MAM policies to that device, right? Because obviously MAM policy is applied to a user, not to a device. So 
in MAM policy, what happens? Let's just say I have applied MAM policy to Outlook to a user. So any device that user is uh, using, irrespective of whether it's a personal device or a corporate device, when he logs into Outlook using his corporate credentials, which has been targeted via MAM policy, it will um, the MAM policy will take effect, right? It might or might not tell him to install the authenticator or the company portal app, which acts as a broker. But uh, irrespective of that, the MAM policy will take in. But in case of a kiosk device, on the contrary, there is no user affiliation to begin with, right? So uh, the MAM policy cannot take effect. And neither does the compliance policy. So compliance can only be evaluated for a device if the device has a user association. In this case, we do not have a user association. So the device's compliance stays as not evaluated. Okay. So this is just a, uh, just a diagrammatic uh, representation of what the device is and the various approaches. So if it is a COSU device, corporate owned single use or a kiosk device, it is obviously fully managed because the personal space is zero. There is no user association here, uh, meaning that, uh, the user, th there is no user affiliated to the device, hence there cannot be no uh, compliance policy or MAM policy, right? Kobu or uh, corporate owned business only in this case, also the device is fully managed. And uh, in this case, there is a user association and you can have a compliance policy or a MAM policy to it. Okay. Cool. So where you can see that it says that you can have a MAM policy, but in this case, you cannot have a MAM policy. Okay. All right. So now let's just talk about work profile. So again, this is a repetitive screenshot. So over here also, you are seeing that we have two instances of the same application. We have Chrome here as well as we have Chrome here. And the interface might be a little different. In some cases, you might be able to see both the containers in the one, in one screen. In some cases, in the first screen, you will be seeing the uh, personal managed space. And when you swipe to the left or to the right, you will be able to see the other virtual container, right? But more often than not, it would be uh, the same way. All right. And now we are going to talk about device owner. And as I already said, uh, as we discussed in the previous diagram, Android Enterprise is divided into Android uh, work profile and device owner. Under device owner, we have got two options, either Kobo or Kosu. Okay. So, the, and in both the cases, may that be Kobo or may that be Kosu, the intended work purpose, well, as it says, device so company is the device owner in this case, right? So the intended use is only for wholly company owned devices. And in this, we are shrinking the personal space to zero and the device is strictly logged down to an environment which has been set by the EMM. Okay. A work managed device strips down almost all the non-critical system applications by default, unless they have been whitelisted. So we will see what this is talking about in case of a COSU device, wherein we push something like a managed home screen and it suppresses all the native applications as well. So we won't be able to see the native email app or the contact app or the phone book app. And all we'll be seeing is the application that we exclusively whitelisted. Okay. And provides access only to authorized application via Google managed play store. Nothing more. Okay. Cool. So first let's just do, uh, let's just talk about Kobo and then we will talk about Kosu. So Kobo stands for company owned business only. So these devices, as I said, are owned by the organization and are used for uh, corporate purpose only or business purpose only, and they do not have any personal space in it and allows admin to manage the entire device and enforces a extended range of policies and there is no user space in the device. Okay. All right. And uh, it, and it's also known as fully managed user devices because there is a user associated in this device. Okay. It's not a userless device. It's there's a user support uh, associated with the device. Okay. And it can be enrolled via NFC or DPC or a QR code. So QR code is a common way of enrolling these devices. Okay. Or zero touch. So in this case, or in all the cases for Android devices, what happens is uh, in tune. So in case of iOS, we, we are familiar that iOS is to, uh, talks to the APNS, right? Like the Apple push notification service. In case of Android, it actually speaks with the GCM or FCM. And then it, uh, then it tells it all the po uh, policies, the inventories and uh, all the notification, which goes to the GCM. And from GCM, it comes down to the device. Okay. 
How do we set it up? So uh, one of the easier ways of enrolling a device as Kubo is via QR code. Okay. And the QR code uh, will remain the same for the entire tenant, no matter who is using it. Okay. So the way to do it is we have to go to and uh, Microsoft Intune device, device enrollment, Android enrollment. And then there is that option which says, uh, this is for kiosk devices that is Kosu. And this is for corporate owned business only devices. It says corporate owned fully managed user devices because there is a user affiliation. Okay. You just have to click on yes over here uh, and then the QR code will come up over here. All you have to do is you have to provide a screenshot of this QR code to the end user and the end user can make uh, scan this QR code and then the enrollment will be triggered. Okay. Uh, now let's just see what is the end device behavior. What is it that we see in the end device and step by step what happens first and then what happens second. So uh, obviously just like in case of autopilot or DEP, it happens as a part of the out of the box. Okay. So if you have a fresh device, you're powering it on for the very first time. Well and good. If not, then you will have to reset the device. You'll have to do a factory reset. And once you come into the first screen, the very first screen where you have to select the language and location, then you have to click on the screen for five times. Okay. So when you click on the, uh, so ideally what you'll be doing, you would be under normal setup. You would be clicking on start, selecting the language location and entering your a username, password, whatever it will ask you, uh, Google Gmail account and all that. And then you will be at the, you will be at the home screen, right? But in this case, we will uh, tap on the language screen for five times and then it will uh, bring up this uh, page wherein you we have an option of setting the device up using QR code. We are going to click on next and then it's going to install the QR reader in the device. Okay. And once it installs the QR reader, it will show us that uh, it will uh, give us an option of signing. I mean, once it installs the QR reader, we will have to obviously uh, scan the QR code, which is there in our portal. Once we scan our QR code, it is going to realize that, okay, this is, we are trying to do a Kobu enrollment or a Kosu enrollment in both the cases. And then it will give us this prompt saying that it's downloading an admin app. Okay. So it's going to automatically download an admin app in the device. What this application is, we'll talk about that later. Once that application has been installed, then uh, automatically a Chrome browser will open up and it will ask us to enter our username. We will enter our username. We will enter our password here and then it will prompt us with this screen when it says that set up your work phone. It says that follow these steps for your IT admin from your IT admin. And this is from wherein the enrollment is uh, starting. The process of enrollment is starting. Okay. If I uh, click on install, it is going to install the Microsoft Intune app in my case. And uh, so this Microsoft Intune app, is doing the same thing what company portal app does okay so in case of kobu or kosu uh, we are i mean we are making use of the intune app the microsoft intune app rather than the uh, company portal app okay so it installs that and then it gives so the first phase is done that is install work app so this is referred to as a work app and the app is installed. Now it's giving us an option to register. This is from wherein the early registration and the enrollment will be triggered. Okay. So we'll have to click on start. It will give us an option. It will launch the Intune app and you can see it looks a lot like the company portal app only. We'll click on sign in. We'll enter the username. We'll enter the password and then it will show that signing in. And then it comes to the screen wherein it shows me my portal. I mean, my tenant, and then it says that there are two actions pending. First is registering your device and then choosing the device category. Okay. So then uh, when I click on next, it will register the device. The uh, workplace join will happen and then the enrollment will trigger. And then if you have uh, created any device category, then you'll have an option of choosing one of those categories. Again, we have spoken about what the category is and we just have to click on one and then click on done and then it will say that your device has been registered, work apps have been installed, you are ready for work. You just have to click on done and then you will come into the home screen. And this is a home screen of a 
Kobo device, company owned business only device. And over here, you can see that it doesn't have much application apart from the application, which I might have pushed to this device as required. If I push any application as available, then I'll be able to see it in the Intune app in, in this app. Okay. So in this case, I didn't push down any much application. Therefore, uh, we were not able to see any application over here. Otherwise you would be able to. Okay, so once this device is enrolled, this is how the device shows up in the portal. So if I go into the portal, I can see uh, this device and under notice this under the OS, it shows as fully managed. Okay, so if it's a Kobo device, it shows as a fully managed device because there is no personal space in the device, right? And it is attributed to a user. So this is a user ID that I used. You can see that the device is compliant. We'll see all of that. I'll do a demo and I'll show you guys what exactly is happening step by step. I just wanted to give you guys a heads up of what is coming and show you guys the screenshot. Okay. Similarly, in case of Kosu, the only difference is we will have to determine beforehand the application that is going to run in the device because the device is not going to run with any other application other than the ones that we have specifically mentioned or selected or whitelisted. Okay. And there is no user associated with this device. Okay. So it's a userless device. What that means is it's a userless device. The compliance of the device cannot be evaluated. So the compliance state of this device will always stay as not evaluated. Okay. Also known as a kiosk device, fully managed device, just like Kobo, but this is running with the whitelisted applications only. How to set it up? Earlier we clicked over here. Now we are going to click over here, which says corporate owned dedicated devices. We click over there and then we have an option of creating a token. Okay. So we can create multiple tokens in case of uh, Kosu devices and each token will have its separate QR code. Okay. Because let's just say that there is that first device uh, onto which I want to uh, whitelist four applications. And there is a second device onto which I want to enlist uh, whitelist two applications. Okay. So how do I do that? For that, we have this option of uh, creating different uh, tokens and each device, which is enrolled by a specific kind of token uh, will be uh, can be made to be a part of a specific dynamic group and the applications can be targeted accordingly. I, I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. So right now what I'm doing is I'm creating a token over here. I just have to name the token. That's all. And when I click on that token, when I name that token, that's it. That's done. Then I can just click on tokens and I can see the QR code. And this is the QR code that will be coming. That is what we'll be sending down to the devices, right? I mean the end device as a screenshot or something like that. Okay. And then I'll have to create something like a dynamic membership rule. So what I'm trying, what this dynamic membership rule is doing is I'm saying that any device which has scanned this code should be a part of this group. Okay. Should be a part of a dynamic group that I'm creating right now. Okay. So how do I do that? I say that any device which use the enrollment profile name equal to Kosu. Or in this case, it is Kosu, Kosu token. Okay. So any device which had the enrollment profile, which was, which scanned the QR code of a enrollment profile with the name Kosu should be dynamically added to this group. Okay. So over here, it says over here, it's the device dot enrollment profile name equals Kosu or Kosu test or ABC or whatever name we give to the token. Okay. And what that would do is any device which scanned the QR code of that token will be added to that specific dynamic device group. Okay. And then most importantly, what we'll have to do, we will have to create a device configuration profile wherein we will whitelist the applications. These are the applications which will run in the device. Other than that, any other application will not run in the device. So you'll have to come into Microsoft Intune device configuration. You'll have to select Android enterprise here. And then as you guys know, under Android enterprise, there are two things, either work profile or uh, company owned devices. So Kobu or Kosu are both company owned devices. Therefore we'll have to select this option, which says device owner. And then we will select the option device restriction. And then we'll have to go into dedicated devices, which is the section for kiosk. And then first we'll select the kiosk mode, single app or multi app, whether we want only one application to run in the device or a couple of applications. 
So we'll select whatever we want to. In my case, I selected single app and under the managed uh, and when we select on sing, uh, single app, we have an option of selecting the application that we want to run in the device. Okay. So these applications are already deployed from managed place. So before, so now you would, now a basic question would be, where does this list populate from? So what happens is if there is any app that has already been deployed from our portal from the client app section, then it will show up over here. So right now, if I go into my portal and if I go into the client app section, and if I go into see all the apps that are deployed, I'll see all these apps deployed under client apps. Okay. To anybody, not to a specific group. I'm just saying that there is a, if I go into the client app, I can see this application over there. We already know how to add it. We just have to, I mean, add the store link or something like that. Once we do that, we have an option of choosing any of these apps in our dedicated device profile. I'll show it that to you guys in the demonstration as well. Okay. So let's just say I want to have a single app kiosk and I want just find my device application to run in the device. So I select it from here. And then uh, if I want multi app, then I'll select multi app over here. And then I'll select all the applications that I want to add. And then I'll have to also send an application called managed home screen app. Okay. I'll tell you guys what managed home screen app is later on and why that is used. But for now, if you're using multi app, then we'll select all the applications. Like in this case, I did Intune managed browser, maybe Chrome, maybe Firefox, and then managed home screen app as well. So managed home screen app is again, an app, which is available in the play store or app store. So just go to client apps and then from there, deploy it and, or add it. Once you do over here, you will be able to search it. Okay. All right. So we will select all the applications that we want to, in this case, I, and just click on add, add, and it will start showing up over here. Once we are done with that, then all the other, uh, options are pretty much, uh, I left it to basic one option that we want that we may want to know is leave kiosk mode code. So if we set this to enable, then the end user will have an option of exiting from the kiosk mode. So they will have to click on that uh, back icon or that the, the back icon that we have in the mobile device, uh, 16 times when they do that, they will be prompted with a pin. And if they enter the pin that we set up over here, the device will exit the kiosk mode. Okay, cool. So other than that, there are other settings as well. You might as want to take a look over that, but I left it all to default. And then once the device is enrolled, this is how the device shows up. So I am assuming this is the serial number of the device or the um, device ID. No, this shouldn't be the device ID. This is the serial number of the device. And then it shows as Android enterprise and then the person name and, and then uh, a timestamp managed by MDM. It's a corporate device compliance. As I said, is not evaluated because there is no user association and the operating system is Android dedicated over in the previous case. We saw, so we saw it was Android fully managed. In this case, it is dedicated, meaning it's dedicatedly running with a couple of applications. The OS version is 7.0 last check in well, whatever there is. And the enrolled by UPN is none because the device is not attributed to any user. Now let's just take a look over the device behavior. What are the screens that we see in the device? Again, this is just, just like in case of Kobo, in case of Kosu also, it has to be a brand new device or we are doing a factory reset of a device. So we'll, uh, when we come into the welcome screen, we'll click on that screen for, we'll tap on the screen for four or four or five times. It will start the QR code setup. We'll have to select the Wi-Fi. And then it will take a couple of minutes and then the camera will automatically launch up and then we'll have the option of scanning the QR code. So we'll have to, we can either go into the profile or if the screenshot of the QR code was given to the user, they just have to open the camera and then scan it. Once they scan it, the device is going to realize that, okay, you're trying to enroll it. It will say that setting up the work profile, you'll have to encrypt the device. In the previous case, this screenshot was not there, right? Because the device was already encrypted. If the device is not encrypted. It will tell you to encrypt it. You have to charge your phone to 80% and keep it in the charging mode and then, and plug it in, I meant. And then uh, once the device is encrypted, the device will restart the enrollment will resume. It will first download the, in, uh, the admin app, which is Intune app. And then it will set the device owner installing the admin app again. You'll have to uh, accept the EULA and then it will update the Play Store. And then, so these are all the screenshots one by one. I know that they are not very pretty. Just wanted to give you guys a heads up before we head into the video. 
So over here you can see that it is finishing updating the device and then applying organizational policy and then you come down to the home screen. Okay, so this is the screen that you're that you have come down to. But now you would be saying that okay, this doesn't really look like a kiosk device. Then well, what I would say is just give it a moment, and then the magic will happen. So if you wait for around two to three minutes, the Intune app is already there. The sync would be running. The applications will one by one start coming down. So if you wait a couple of minutes, you will automatically see the Intune app. If you wait a couple of minutes more, you will see the Chrome app. which i whitelisted and the managed home screen app which also i whitelisted in the device restriction profile and then a couple of seconds later you will be seeing that the device enters into this mode wherein if i click over here nothing happens if i click over here nothing happens if i click over here nothing happens the three buttons and the only thing that i can see is the chrome application in the device okay so the device is a kiosk device now locked down to make use of chrome only okay and if i click on this application if i click on this button uh, 16 times then this page opens up and i have this option of exiting the qr code exiting the kiosk mode right so i'll have to enter that pin which i which i was talking about which we set up in the portal okay and if i click on this launch microsoft intune app this is equivalent to the company portal app and if i launch that then i can run a sync from here i can click over here and initiate a sync okay and as i said if i click on exit kiosk mode it will ask us to enter a pin if we enter a pin then we will be able to exit the qr code okay once i exit the kiosk mode then this is a device out of the kiosk mode the device will still not be uh, so what happens is in this case also the device does not have any other application but you can see the native applications right so that is what deploying the managed home screen does it hides the native application in the device and gives you a complete uh, a kiosk experience okay cool okay guys so until now we have spoken about all the various kinds of enrollments possible how to do it what is the user experience and all that but then that brings us to the very important question of how to make the determination i mean which one to choose and when given that i mean with with a lot of options comes a lot of confusion right so now i just wanted to clarify that which one to use and when depending upon this flow chart so i got this flow chart online and uh, this is basically the questions we have to ask ourselves before we end up enrolling an android device or before we as an admin facilitate enrollment of uh, android devices to our tenant the first thing is whether we want to move off device admin or not whether we want to migrate from device admin to android enterprise or not i strongly suggest we do because post android 10 this is i mean android device admin is not supported right so we might as well migrate before even if we are using a uh, android version pre uh, prior to android 10 in our environment so the first question that we need to ask on the basis of which this uh, determination will be made is whether the device is personal or corporate okay so if the device is a personal device then we go with work profile because i mean keeping in mind that work profile was actually designed initially for a uh, personal devices because in personal device now we are not managing the entire device we are managing a container of the device so th therefore we told the user that we won't be managing your entire device we are just managing a container and we won't be having visibility to the entire device therefore it was more seamless for a personal device okay so let's just say that user has a personal device and we want to manage the device and the applications in the device but we are not managing the entire device just a container in the device then we will go ahead with the Android enterprise work profile kind of enrollment, okay, wherein we are containing again, wherein we are creating that prof uh, that container within the device. Now, let's just say that the requirement is not controlling the device at all. So, if if we if a device is enrolled as work profile, we can determine how the device is going to behave, right? We are maintaining a container in the device as well as the device itself, right? But let's just say that we only want we only the requirement is only managing an application in the device and that's all not managing the device at all let's just say it's a personal device and instead of managing that container in the device because if we manage the container then obviously we can push something like a device configuration profile a device restriction profile encryption of the device we can make many changes at the device level 
but let's just say that it's a personal device and the only thing that we as an admin need to manage in the device is the application in the device and not the device itself. In that case, what we can do is we can make use of something called a MAM without enrollment. That is a uh, app protection policy. So MAM without enrollment means that we are not enrolling the device. We are only applying the MAM policies or the Intune app protection policies and the device does not need to be enrolled for this to happen. Okay. So again, just a revamp, uh, if the device, the first thing that we need to ask is the devices that we are going to manage, whether that's a personal device or a corporate device. If it's a personal device, then we need to decide whether we just aim to manage the applications in the device or whether we want to manage the device as well. If we want to manage the device as well, then we will be going ahead with the Android enterprise work profile kind of enrollment. If we just wish to manage the application in the device, then the device does not need to be enrolled. All we'll be doing is Intune app protection policies. Okay. That is the MAM policies without enrollment. Okay. Now let's just talk about a scenario wherein the device was not personal, but the device was corporate. It is corporate provided devices, right? Company owned device. So if it's a company owned device, then well, again, there are two questions that we will have to ask ourselves. If it's a company provided device, then whether the device is attributed to a user or whether it's a userless device, meaning if it's a device like which we are keeping in a store, which is not being used by one user, but with all the users, if and when they choose to do so. In that case, we'll have to go ahead with something like without user affinity devices. So where it says that uh, want user affinity, if you don't want user affinity, then enroll as dedicated device. This is the other word for COSU, C-O-S-U or the kiosk devices. And this is C-O-B-O, -O, the one that we talked about earlier. Okay. So, if, and as I said, in case of COSU, there is no user affinity. It's a kiosk device designed to run with a couple of applications only and cannot assign compliance policy to a COSU devices. On the other hand, fully managed device or a COBU device, company owned business use only. And in these devices, you can apply, uh, you can do everything that you would be able to do, but it is just that the personal container is shrunk to zero. The corporate container is uh, shrunk, is expanded to maximum. Okay. So these are the questions that we need to ask ourselves before we end up deciding that, okay, it's going to be an Android fully managed, or it's going to be a work profile, or it's going to be key or, uh, Kosu, or whether it's just going to be a device admin. Okay. All right. So now what I wanted to talk about guys is the enrollment flow in case of an Android device. So when I enroll, so if I ask, if we ask ourselves, what happens when we, what is the process of the enrollment flow? I mean, we are clicking into, we are downloading the company portal application, logging into it and magically the enrollment is happening, right? But there must be something that is happening at the back end, which is facilitating this enrollment flow. So guys, I will not go into the very details of what happens during an enrollment flow. There is a specific, there is a separate nugget just for this. You might uh, want to refer to that wherein we have done a deep dive. But uh, this is just, again, a thousand feet overview of what might be happening when we are doing an enrollment of an Android device. Okay. Okay. So the way we are going to understand the enrollment flow is first I'm going to play a video which shows us the flow of enrollment. We will pause it whenever required and then I will explain what is happening in the background. Okay. So here it says that the process starts with the end user downloading and installing the company portal application on the device. What happens is the user launches the company portal application for the very first time and then the enrollment and then the, before the enrollment begins, before anything can begin, the logging will begin. Okay. So let me just play the over here. Logs. I'm launching it. Okay. And you can see over here that it takes a couple of seconds. And after those couple of seconds, we see that in the company portal application, we are getting an option to sign in. Okay. So obviously there must have been some processing that happened at the back end before this sign in button came in. So what happens is uh, when we launch the company portal application, first of all, the logging cap, uh, the, it will initialize the logging. I mean, it will log which device it is. What is the time? When was the company portal installed and all those information. Okay. The second thing that happens is that the company portal application runs its own package integrity check. 
So it will reach out to the FCM or to the GCM and it will make sure that the application, the company portal application that we are using has not been tampered with and that is a valid company portal application that we are using. Okay. All right. So after that, the company portal application reaches out to the push notification service of the platform, in this case, GCM or FCM, and it registers the device over there. And then it will connect to the Microsoft graph service and it will provide us the default company portal branding page. So if I uh, click on sign in, all right, so it takes a couple of seconds and then it gives us the option to sign in. So I'm going to click on sign in. We'll talk about what is happening at the background at, at the end. Uh, I click on sign in. Okay. So at this point of time, we are, we just, all we did was we clicked on sign in. And once we clicked on sign in at the background, you can see that it is showing Microsoft Intune. So this is a company portal branding page, right? So this company portal branding page is not coming from our tenant. It is coming from Microsoft Intune service. So what happened was when we clicked on the sign in page, we saw the default mic, uh, Microsoft uh, branding page, which gave us the option of clicking on I mean, entering the username. Okay. So what I'm going to do, what the end user will be doing, he will be entering the username here. I enter the username. Let me just forward the video a little. Okay. That's the username and then the password. So now if you see that just when I entered the username and I clicked on enter, the it is prompting me for the password, but at the back end, you can see the customized company portal branding, which I have configured for my tenant, right? So you can see it's saying at the bottom, everything about Intune and then the wallpaper that I have put in my tenant. So what is happening is the end user is entering his username and the home realm discovery occurs at the back end. The home realm discovery will occur and Intune will find out that, okay, which is the tenant for this user. For example, if I am entering ABC at the rate everything about Intune.com, then obviously everything about Intune.com is the tenant that can very that can validate my username and password. So the request will go to my tenant that is referred to as the home realm discovery and it will get the response and it will show the customized company portal branding page. It will also set the location service. Okay. So we enter the username, we enter the password, uh, home realm discovery was done. I click on enter. <laughs> Okay. So now over here, you can see it says that signing in and then checking security requirements. I am going to click on begin. And uh, before we click on begin over here, it is very intuitively telling the end user that what is it that is going to happen. First, there has to be a work profile, which is going to get created. And then we have to activate that work profile and update the device settings. So at this point of time, when you are seeing this screen, obviously the authentication has happened. And how did the authentication happen? The authentication would have happened via either the Azure AD or the on-prem DC if it was federated, if it was uh, federated via ADFS. So again, I mean, I'm not going to go into the very details of the tokens involved here. There's a separate nugget on enrollment flow. Please refer to that. This is just again a thousand feet overview. So assuming that the uh, authentication happened fine, company portal application will get the access token, the refresh token, the family refresh token, and save it in the keychain. Once the authentication is done, then the terms of usage page will come in. Everything, all of these things are getting logged and in the logs, which we'll see later. And once authentication is done, now the first thing that will start is the Azure AD registration or the workplace join of the device. The Azure AD registration will happen. And uh, again, during the Azure AD, I mean, what is the outcome of Azure AD registration of a device? The outcome of Azure AD registration of a device is a device record of the device gets created under Azure AD Blade in the, in the Azure portal and the device gets a certificate issued to it by Azure. So I believe it is issued by MS organizational access. I don't exactly remember, but yeah, the device gets a certificate issued to it. Where does the certificate come from? Again, just a thousand feet overview. The device has a component called PKCS generator, which is going to create a certificate. The public, that certificate is going to be sent to Azure or to Intune to get stamped. That certificate comes back and the public key of that certificate becomes the Azure AD device ID or the Intune device ID respectively. Okay. 
All right. So mm -mm. I'm going to click over here. It is showing what is it that so the end user is enrolling this device, right? That is what we are doing right now. So when the end and he's enrolling it as a work profile, right? Under Android Enterprise. So over here, very intuitively, the company portal application is actually going to show him and tell him what is it that your admin can see and what is it that your admin cannot see. So over here, it says very intuitively that the admins cannot see the calls and the web history and the location and the password and the camera role. What he can see is the model, the serial number, the operating system, the applications, the owners and all that, right? Click on continue. We just have to click on continue. And then over here, it says setting up the work profile. And agree. then we have to, yeah, agree to Set that. Up. Okay. So the prompts are very intuitive and they are self-explanatory. Okay, the work profile is created. Now click on continue. Okay, here I have to select the category. So the device category is something that we create in the portal. This is not mandatory. So what happens if I, if I as an end user, I'm selecting HR, then you as an admin can see all the devices which are tagged as HR during the enrollment. So it makes your job as an administrator easier. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Okay. The device is now enrolled. Let's click on done. So you can see the device over here, the first one, the device that got enrolled. And if I go into the app section, there is a section of Play Store. If I click over there, I'll be able to see all the managed applications. So in Android Enterprise, if an application has to be deployed, which we'll talk about in a separate nugget for MAM, uh, if an application has to be deployed, it has to be approved from the managed Play Store and only the applications uh, can be installed from there. So this is what managed Play Store is, the Play Store with a, that briefcase icon, okay? All right, so uh, 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 that is what I wanted to show you guys in the video. Now let's just try and understand uh, what happened. So the company portal application will reach out to the Azure DRS, Azure AD registration will happen. And uh, uh, there are a lot of checks which are happening as well. So um, after the, uh, during the Azure AD registration, as I said, how does the Azure AD registration happen? Again, a thousand feet overview. Uh, the device, there is a component in the device that generates a certificate, sends it to Azure, Azure stamps it, sends it back to Intune, the public key of that certificate becomes the Azure AD device ID. Once that is done, then the device will reach out to Azure again, and it will be redirected to the Intune service, and the Intune service will provide the pre-negotiated MDM endpoint URLs, the URLs ending with .svc. And uh, the license will be checked. The enrollment restriction will be checked. Again, similar way, a certificate will be generated by the device. And the public key of that sort will become the Intune device ID. It will be saved in the Intune's keychain. And then the compliance will be evaluated. And then the profiles and the policies will come down. Okay. So this is again a snippet from the other uh, nugget that I was talking about, which talks about uh, the, which is a deep dive on uh, enrollment. So yeah, the, we launched the company portal, the logging starts, it connects to the AP, APNS or the GCM or FCM in this case, the sign in button comes in, we click on that sign in button and uh, it connects to the Microsoft graph service and it uh, displays the default company branding. We have the option of entering the username and password. We enter the username, home realm discovery happens and then the, uh, then we get an option to enter the password at the background. We can see the of uh, the customized company portal branding and the image that we have selected. We enter the username, password, the authentication happens via ADFS or Azure AD depending. And then there are a whole bunch of tokens that are issued, which are saved in the device's keychain. Once that is done, then the workplace journal Azure AD registration will begin. Once that is done, then the MDM scope, uh, then depending upon the MDM scope in case of Windows, uh, the .svc URL will come down to the device. The device, again, the PKCS generator in the device will uh, 
will uh, generate a token, will generate a certificate and it will get enrolled when it gets enrolled. During the enrollment, it will check for the enrollment restriction and the Intune license. And then the public key of that cert will become the Intune device ID. And then it gets uh, a cert issued to, I mean, that cert is actually issued if you see issued by it will say that earlier it used to say sc online issuing but now it has been changed to microsoft intune mdm device ca so anytime you're enrolling a device you will be able to see a certificate from microsoft intune device mdm ca and uh, uh, and uh, earlier you used to see sc online issuing and from azure you will be seeing something like ms organizational access Okay, so I know that this was uh, too much of information, very cramped in just five minutes. I, I really don't want to go into very details of how this flow is happening because as I said, there is a separate, this is a separate topic and there is a separate nugget on the enrollment flow. I highly recommend you guys go through that first and then this will make more sense. Okay, now let's just talk about the logs very quickly. So in case of Android, you will see there are four kinds of logs which are generated and you can generate it from the company portal application in the device itself. And this contains the information for MDM as well as MAM. So in case of iOS, which you'll see later, if you need the MAM logs, there is a different way to do it. The company portal logs won't get us the MAM information. But in case of Android, in the company portal logs itself, we will get the information of MDM as well as MAM. So in the uh, when we go into the company portal app over there, we have a section called help. We can go over there and we can generate the log. It gives us the incident ID as well as it gives us the option of attaching the log as an email or saving it in the SD card. So once you do that, it will save these uh, four kinds of logs. The company portal log, the OMADM log, the device log and the broker auth log. And this is how it would look like. So these two are the company portal log. This is the diagnostic log, the OMADM log and the broker auth log. And these are the MAM logs. So if there is any MAM, uh, if there is any application in the same device which has been targeted via the MAM policy, then you will be able to see the MAM logs as well getting generated. If not, then these won't be present. Okay. All right. So now let's just understand what is the difference and which one is relevant. So this one and this one are the one that are the important ones. The company portal log contains everything that has happened in and transpired in the device during the enrollment process. After the enrollment process also, you will see traces of other information, but the company portal log is very, very useful for checking anything related to the uh, the company portal scrub uh, scrub log is very useful for changing anything related to the enrollment if enrollment failed or if it happened where it happened the wpj happened or not and you will see everything that we spoke about in the flow we'll see that later and the omadm log this will contain all the information which happened in the device uh, or, or everything that is going on in the device after the enrollment happened so any policy any application coming down to the device it will be logged over here you will be able to see traces of this activity and other logs as well but this is the primary use we'll be more often than not looking at company portal logs to make sure the enrollment was fine and if any application is deployed or a policy is deployed if that's not working we'll be seeing the omadium logs we can always check the company portal logs the company portal scrubbed logs as well okay so the one ending with underscore zero is the most latest one okay so and uh, it gets overwritten. So you'll see under something like underscore zero, underscore one, underscore two, underscore three, and underscore zero is the most latest one. Okay. So what we are going to do, we are going to analyze a company portal log now. The, when I say company portal log, I mean the company portal scrubbed log. Okay. And see that whether what we discussed here and what we discussed here and what we saw in the video are all in accordance with the log or not. Okay. All right. So in the log the first thing we are going to see is that the logging is initiated so th this is again the same steps you, if you want you might just want to make a note of this uh, the same steps which we discussed in the previous slide so uh, i'm going to d demonstrate the logs now and keep one thing in mind you would see that all the time that we are seeing is in ascending order what uh, the reason why i wanted to uh, highlight that is I have not changed the sequence of the log to match the flow. 
Okay, so I mean, I'm just trying to make a point that the logs are in the correct sequence and they are co correlating with the flow that we saw over there. So when you open a company portal log, the very first line that you're going to see is it says that initializing initialize logging to the file pattern. Okay, it is going to start the logging and it is going to say that crash reporting successfully initialized. Once that is done, it is going to make a capture of, it is going to capture an information of the device. That what is the device? What is the display name of the device? What is the hardware of the device, the manufacturer, the model on which the company portal application is running? Okay, so it will make a note of this information as well as it will make a note of the version of the company portal application that is running. Okay, so it made a note of that. Then the second thing it does is it runs a signature for so it's checking the integrity of the company portal application over here you can see it says that checking signature for package com dot microsoft dot windows intune dot company portal okay once that is done it takes some time 420 milliseconds it says over here and then the sign in button is presented to the end user okay so if i go back here we launched the company portal, the logging start, we just saw that it connected to the APNS or GCM, we did not really see this. And then you will see that it is giving us an option of signing in to the device. So we enter the UPN, uh, we don't enter the UPN yet, we click on the sign in button. And then the authentication phase starts and it, then it says that starting the UI based user sign in and then the location services is going to be set and then you will this is the default company portal branding so over here you see there is the default company portal branding the branding is updated and uh, once the company portal branding is updated we'll have the option of entering the username and password right so we enter the username we enter the password and uh, we, we enter the username we enter the password and one of the things that it checks is for mfa right if the mfa is enabled it is going to query and prompt you one more time after you enter the password to make sure that you have to enter the password as well. Okay. All right. So once that is done, the authentic once the authentication is complete, assuming that the username password was correct, it says that authentication is completed, right? Then it uh, requests for term, uh, requesting for terms of usage, which, uh, so if you have set up any TOU terms of usage, then the user is prompted with that and the user has to click on, uh, term a user has to click on i accept or if you haven't set it then it says something like this that terms of usage per enrollment is disabled and uh, user does not have to device is not enrolled continuing uh, company terms do not need to be accepted okay because there were no terms of condition so these are this is from one set of log and this is from other set of log in the first set of log it was the terms of usage was set in the second it was not set okay all right, so once that is done, then it will actually send, uh, you will be able to see it is going to send get information and uh, to a lot of endpoints to do the Azure AD registration. And then it's going to, so this kind of, uh, this is one of the endpoints for Azure. And you are able to see that it's sending uh, the get information. It gets a response. In the response, you can actually see the UPN that was used to send that to trigger that uh, to trigger that get request and then over here you are seeing that the workplace join is happening right the wpj is happening so or the azure registration is happening so once the, work the workplace join is done it will change from not calculated to in progress and then in progress to completed okay so over here you can see that a workplace join changes from in progress to succeeded and then once the workplace join is done, then it will start the enrollment. Enrollment is getting triggered here. It is then going to send a post request. It is going to send it to uh, Intune endpoints. And then you will be seeing something like this, enrolling with additional SOAP. And once the enrollment is done, you will see something like enrollment view model is completed and the device gets a certificate and there is that expiration date of the certificate as well. Once, once the device is enrolled, then the first thing you will see is that the compliance is getting evaluated. Over here, you can see that the compliance state of the device is compliant. The compliance will be evaluated. Unless the compliance is evaluated, you will see that the compliance state of the device is uh, not evaluated. Once it is evaluated, it will show as compliant. Sorry, it will show as compliant or not compliant. And then the app configuration policy, the app protection policy, and the device configuration policy and everything will come down to the device, right? Okay, so again, this was again a thousand feet overview of uh, how the log looks like and how the enrollment flow looks like. Uh, for more details, please check, check the other nugget. Okay, all right, so moving on.
So guys, now we are going to talk about device communication as in what happens when we push a policy from Intune. How does it really come down to the device? So in case of iOS, if you guys remember, there is something called APNS. The device speaks with the Apple push notification service and it sends down a notification to the end device. How does it happen in case of uh, Android? It's a little different. So it happens on a push model. What happens is Intune triggers a push notification service. Uh, using the push notification registration ID of every device. So if every time a device is enrolled, there is a push notification registration ID of every device. And referencing that ID, Intune will push down a policy to uh, the push notification service. In this case, it would be GCM or FCM. Okay. So the push notification service in the cloud by Google will go ahead and notify that policy to the MDM broker on this device, which in this case is the company portal application or the uh, Microsoft Intune application in the device. Okay. And then the MDM broker on this device will uh, initiate a check-in with the service and then it will directly fetch that policy. So the device, so the Intune service speaks with the, uh, the Intune service will speak with the push notification service. Push notification service will notify the device and then device will go and directly communicate with the Intune service and get the information that the Intune service wanted to send to the device at the very first place. Okay. However, if the push notification service fails to notify the device, then all the platform, uh, it, it might fail because this is on best effort basis and, in, and it is not guaranteed that the push notification service would reach to the device. And if it doesn't, then it will, uh, then the policy will come down to the device on the basis of the default sync cycle, which I believe is six hours for iOS and uh, eight or nine hours for Android and Windows. Okay. These are the ports that are there in place uh, for Windows. It is 443 for iOS. It is 5223 and 2197 and for Android it is 5228. This is the port on which the communication is happening. It's just a screenshot of how it is happening. So Intune service is talking to the push notification service and then the push notification service is sending the information drop to the device and the device is then directly communicating with the Intune service and it is getting the information which it needs to do. Okay. Intune triggers the push notification service and then the push notification service will come down to the device, initiate a DM session with the MDM provider and then the MDM broker on the device initiates a DM session directly with the service and it gets it. Okay. All right, so this is again the same uh, same uh, illustration. So in, when Intune, when we are making a policy, it, it goes to the management API in form of a JSON format. It comes down to the device and then uh, the device directly checks in and receives the command it wants to receive. Okay, now uh, until now guys, we have spoken about uh, how we can enroll a device as Android Enterprise or as Android Device Admin, but then where do we make that selection? I mean, the same user, I mean, this is a selection which the end user is not making, right? This is a selection which the admin is making. So where does he make this selection? Because we might have an instance wherein we want to have some user enroll their device as Android Enterprise and some as device admin. So this is something which we decide in the enrollment restrictions section of the portal. So under Microsoft Intune uh, device enrollment, if you uh, go to this section which says enrollment restriction, there are two kinds of restrictions that you can uh, make. One is device type and second is device limit. Device type restriction, as the name suggests, tells us what kind of devices can a user enroll and what kind of devices a user cannot enroll. Device limit, as the name suggests, uh, determines how many devices can a user enroll. By default, it is set to five and it can be a set to a maximum of 15 unless it's a DEM account in which you can enroll in a maximum of 1000 devices. But what we are concerned about right now is the device type restriction. So by default, there is a device type restriction set, but you can click over here uh, create a new restriction and create your own restrictions. So let's just say that you want to facilitate a scenario wherein some users should be able to enroll their devices as Android Enterprise and some as Android Device Admin. So in that case, what you'll have to do, you'll have to create two device restriction policies or profiles, assign the first one to the first user, second one to the second user, and both the users will have the similar experience. Okay. And what do we select in this restriction? Well, there has to be something that we have to select, right? So by default, you can see that this is the by default selection. And if you click on this edit button, 
the restriction will open up and it will give you the option to restrict whatever you want so if you you can block so in this case what i've done is i have blocked the android en enterprise and i have allowed android device admin and rest all are allowed so if so and then as i said this restriction is just like a policy which needs to be assigned to a user so if i let's just say if i assign it to a user and for that user if android enterprise was blocked if he tries to enroll the device as android enterprise i mean if he tries to enroll a device it will be enrolled as android device admin and not as android enterprise because obviously android enterprise is blocked if i if i block both of them and if i try to enroll a device then it uh, the user will get a prompt saying that this enrollment is not facilitated and the device restriction is blocked it will give him a intuitive prompt saying that the enrollment cannot succeed if i allow both of them then android enterprise will take precedence over android device admin because android enterprise is more restrictive okay so this is the one that will win and then not on the basis just on the basis of platform you can block on the basis of versions also that this is the minimum version i allowed to get enrolled this is the maximum version allowed to get enrolled and all that okay and uh, i i found this article on the internet it talks about what's the different enrollment method for device admin kind of enrollment so i mean if you're using a nfc tag the minimum os version needs to be 5.1 if you you are using a token it needs to be 6.0 qr code enrollment is supported from uh, android version 7.0 and zero touch enrollment is supported from 8.0 and above okay cool now i i also wanted to talk about battery optimization and the reason i wanted to talk about battery optimization is because we have been seeing a lot of cases and lot on a lot of issues in android devices with respect to this with respect to this battery optimization so what happens is uh, battery optimization is actually a feature which is present in 6.x and above and it improves the battery life by placing the applications in doze mode or in the app standby mode so if you are not if any application is running in the foreground everything would be the same but if any application is not in the foreground if you have minimized an application then the application if the battery optimization for that application is on then the application will go into the doze mode and uh, uh, battery optimization can be turned on or off or it can be blocked as as we need and it, the main use of this is it is uh, it it is i mean the intention is to save the battery life so if you don't want certain things in an application to happen when the application is not in the foreground this is when you will be enabling it and the intent is saving the application however in the process of doing this there are a lot of uh, there are a lot of uh, issues that we see and the most common issue that you you might be seeing is that mam does not work uh, as it should in case of a mam does not work as it should in case of a device for which the battery optimization has been uh, toggled with or you will see or uh, very often you will see that uh, let's just say there was mam policy applied on outlook you will see that you will see a prompt which says that your organization has removed the data and outlook will be unconfigured from that uh, device uh, or you will see a reset happening or you will see a prompt saying that org has removed data from outlook so this doesn't happen in all the devices but i mean i have had an experience with huawei xiaomi oppo vivo poco all these devices that you might in some cases see uh, see these issues popping up so and if you check the logs in the logs you will be able to see that the account is being reset so in the log you can actually see that the account is being reset for outlook and after that it will give you a prompt saying that org has removed the data and you end user will have to uh, reconfigure outlook in the device so the solution for this is the recommendation is to turn off the battery optimization for company portal and outlook so by default yes i know that you might the end users might want to turn on the battery optimization to save the power but if you are facing issues with mam uh, and you are facing these kinds of issues with or without enrollment then the recommendation is turning off the battery optimization for company portal app and for outlook application okay so how do you do that you go into the company portal application and over there you have a section which says that turn on battery optimization or turn off battery optimization so this is from where you can toggle it and in the android device itself 
all you, uh, if you click on that battery optimization uh, option then you can see all the applications for which battery optimization has been turned on and one of those opt uh, applications would be outlook so this is wherein you will be making that selection of turning it off and then i was able to find a service desk article also which talks about uh, not services article sorry i was able to find a user voice forum article also wherein a user has requested that there should be an option of disabling battery optimization on android using a mdm policy so by now i mean uh, as of now we cannot enable or disable battery optimization if a mam is working or not working from intune this is something which the end user has to do manually but yeah i was able to find a user voice forum this is the link to it just in case wherein a user has requested for it so depending upon the number of issues i mean the vote for this might increase or decrease and the next thing that i wanted to talk about was dpc again i mean uh, battery optimization and dpc these are all not need to know information these are good to know information but i mean i just wanted to invest couple of minutes on this so that we are aware of what dpc is so what happens is again we will be seeing a lot of cases wherein the end user will be coming to us with devices like oppo vivo foco mi Xiaomi who have their own version of their Android operating system and then they'll be claiming that uh, you know what I'm not able to enroll my Android device I'm not saying it happens on all the devices but on few of the devices you might be seeing these issues so the best way to test it out is as an Intune administrator what we can do is we can request them to enroll their device with test dpc so what not exactly enroll the en we are not enrolling with test dpc what test dpc does is uh, it actually creates that android enterprise work container in that device okay so if the container is not get if the device was not getting enrolled with intune and if it is not even getting uh, if the work container is not even getting con uh, created with the dpc then it strongly suggests that there is something wrong in the operating system of the device so this is something that will just give you a heads up you are having an issue especially with these devices the ones that i mentioned during the enrollment and the enterprise container is not getting created the work profile is not getting created in that case you can make use of test dpc it's just a free application you just have to install it and open it and then you will see whether the work container gets created or not if it does then we know that okay this is a device which facilitates creation of work container and the apis in the source code has not been messed with okay it gives the uh, developer an ability to see how their application will behave in a managed context which is device owner and it's a uh, i mean it, it was introduced in android 6 marshmallow okay all right cool so how does it how does it work so you just have to go to the play store and then install the test dpc free app when you install it when you open it for the very first time it will ask you to encrypt the device and then uh, you have to this is the by default selection which says that setup managed profile you can just ignore the color and the logo this is like by default you just have to click on then next when you click on next it gives you the screen which says that test dpc is the application which is going to create a work profile in the device you click on next again it says setting up the work profile it will ask you to add an account you can skip that if you want to not a mandate and then you just have to click on finish once you click on finish this is the device and in this device you can see that there is a different container which has been created and in that container we can see that there are these four applications which are present so the uh, the uh, the visually what you see might be a little different from device to device so i mean i was also testing this on samsung s9 and in samsung s9 what happens is uh, when the work profile is created you see another tab over here which says work and when you click on that work tab you see all these three applications and then you see another tab called personal and when you click on this personal tab you see all the rest of the application so I mean, it is more intuitive uh, uh, if uh, I'm depending upon which version of operating system and which device you are using. But in this case also, I mean, it has created a work profile and there are certain applications which are there in that work, which are sitting on that work profile, which are protected by that briefcase icon. And now if I go into the app store and install the Outlook application or any application from the app store, like I have over here, the Outlook application is also protected.
updated. So Outlook application is also running in the work profile. So if you have a user coming to you saying that, you know what, I have an application, it's not it's not working, it's not installing in the work profile, but it's running fine on the uh, on the personal profile. Or you know what, my device is not getting enrolled as Android Enterprise, the work container is not getting created. So testing it out with test DPC uh, is a good idea. I mean, it gives us a heads up, that's all. And the one final thing that I wanted to talk about and tell you guys about was the option of allowing installation from unknown sources. So let's just say that I have a device and in that device I have uh, pushed, an app, uh, pushed an LOB application as required. Okay. So once I complete my enrollment, uh, you, I will be uh, prompted to install that uh, uh, LOB application. I click on that LOB application and I say okay. Please go ahead because the device will keep on prompting me until the installation is done, right? Because it is pushed as required. Or if it is pushed as available, when I click on that application, the application download will begin. Well, before it, before uh, it starts to install, after the download completes, we get a prompt which says that enable uh, unknown sources for company portal. I mean, what it means is we don't, company portal does not know that where this where this application who developed this application whether this is genuine and authentic or not so therefore it is telling us to uh, click on this option you'll you'll uh, see a prompt like this which says that your security uh, for your security your phone is not allowed to install applications from unknown sources you just have to click on settings and then in when you go into the company portal app there is this uh, option to toggle whether you want to allow from unknown sources or not allow if you allow over there there's a disclaimer as well which says that your phone and your personal data are more vulnerable to attack from unknown apps by installing the app from the source you agree that you're responsible for any damage to your phone okay this is just an intuitive prompt that comes up for uh, this especially for lob applications okay for store applications this setting is not relevant usually all right. And finally, the bonus, what I spoke about is the QR code. So if you guys remember, if you're enrolling a device as device admin, then you have an option of, uh, for a COD device, you have an option of scanning a QR code and then enrolling the device. So in case of Kosu, as well as in case of Kobu, that option was there. So in case of Kosu, there was that token which we, in, uh, uh, which we scanned. And in case of Kobu also, there was that enrollment token which we scanned after which the enrollment started. So... I just wondered what exactly is there inside this token. What is it that exactly is happening when we are scanning this token? So what happens is there are a lot of websites available online and these websites are used for decoding what is present inside of that enrollment token. So you can go to the website and uh, if you open up, if, if you upload this QR code, it will just decode it and it will provide you in text what is present inside this QR code. So this is just one example. You just have to Google and say that decode a QR code and uh, you'll be able to see one of the one of websites. I mean, one of this is one of many websites. All you have to do is you just have to upload the file and then click on submit. Once you do that, it will decode the QR code. It will give you all this bunch of information, right? So if I copy this information into a notepad, I, I did that for Kobu as well as I did that for Kosu. I just copied this information, which was the parsed result and the raw text. I just copied it, pasted it in a notepad for Kobu and for Kosu. So you will see that there are a couple of things which is there. It doesn't really contain your tenant ID, but it contains some, uh, uh, some information on that line. So you'll be able to see two things. First is a signature, which is over here. And second is a token, which is over here. So the one at the bottom, it is different for each token. Okay. So for Kosu and for Kobo, you can see that that token is different. However, this signature is same. So I am assuming that the signature is something which signifies from which tenant the QR code is from. And the, the one at the below signifies which QR code we are referring to and what are the properties in that QR code. Okay. So, I mean, uh, there is also one more thing that we can probably do. 
and let's just say that you are scanning the QR code and after the QR code is scanned, the device is getting enrolled and everything is happening fine. But you want to make some changes to the behavior during the enrollment or you want to set it up in a way that after the device is enrolled, a specific application should work or should not work in the device out of the box. Then in that case, there is there are some... Uh, the, the, I mean, you can edit the QR code as well. Again, that is not a supported scenario, but I'm, from Microsoft perspective, but I mean, this is just, again, a good to know information that we can put in a bundle ID of an application over here and then set its value to true or false, which will determine how the device is going to behave after the QR code is scanned, okay? So, I mean, I'm not going to go into the very details of how of uh, how that can be done, but let's just assume that we have somehow edited the QR code, right? So now we need to convert this text back into a QR code, right? How do we do that? Again, there are a lot of QR code generator uh, websites out there. You just have to go to Google and type QR code generator. When you do that, website like these will open up. You just need to paste your content over here and then it will automatically create a QR code and it will give you an option to download this image. Once you download this image, this is the image that you have to send down to your end devices. Uh, I mean, end users who will scan this and will uh, their device will be enrolled accordingly. Okay, so I mean, this was just FYI information that if in case you wanted to make, you're from a developer background and you wanted to make some changes to the behavior of enrollment or uh, the way the device is supposed to behave after the QR code is uh, uh, scanned, then this is how you would be making that change. Okay. All right. So now I know that there has been a lot of discussion until now, a lot of theoretical part and a few screenshots. Now let's just get into the demo and see how it exactly looks during an enrollment. So I'm going to use a Samsung Galaxy X S6 for this demonstration. Right now, as you can see, there is no company portal app in this device and the device is not enrolled to Intune. Well, there is company portal app. Let me just get rid of it. Uh, uh, all right. So I do a OK. Company portal is uninstalled. OK. So now, as you guys already know, uh, for us to do a Kobo or Kosu enrollment, we have to scan a QR code, which is a part of the out of the box experience. So I'll have to do a factory reset of the device since the device is already out of the out of the box OOB. So I'm going to go into the settings and I am going to type R E S E T R E S E T and then general management factory data reset and then reset device. I have to enter the pin. Done. Delete all. It's going to restart the device and it's going to do a factory reset of the device. So once it once the factory reset is done, once the device comes up for the very first time, once it's there at the language screen, we are going to tap on the screen for four times, which is going to open up the uh, QR code reader. And then we are going to scan the QR code. Okay. So you will see that the device will restart a couple of times uh, when once the factory reset happens. So this is the first time the device is restarting. And I'm assuming that if the device is not encrypted already, then as a part of uh, the enrollment, it will tell you to encrypt it. I believe that uh, as we are doing a factory reset, we'll have to re encrypt this device as well. So we'll see how it goes. Okay, so uh, the device seems to be starting now. It says that installing applications, I believe at this point of time, it installs the default, it installs the default applications and uh, the device should be up very shortly now. Let me just plug in a charger as well because during the encryption, the device needs to be 80% charged and needs to be plugged in. Okay, so we are at the welcome screen now and over here you can see that uh, it is telling us to select the language and the location. So uh, by default, what we would be doing is we would be clicking on start, but instead of doing that, I'm going to click on the uh, screen for four or five times and over here it says that the QR code setup page opens. And it says that to set up this device, 
you, uh, for your organization, you will first need to connect to a network and download the QR reader. Okay, so I'm going to click on next, which is going to then tell me to select the network. And I am going to select the network if there is any authentication that needs to happen. We will have to enter the username and password. I have connected to an open network and then it's going to install the QR reader for us. And then uh, it's it will it's going to open the camera which we are going to use to scan the QR code. Okay, over here it says that installing the QR reader, right? Okay, so the QR reader was installed and now you can see that the camera in this device is open. So I'm going to scan the code for Kosu now, okay? Okay, so I'm back at my portal and I am going to, this is going to be a little difficult, but still let me try. I'm going to go into device enrollment, Android enrollment, and first we are going to do Kosu and then we will be doing Kobo, okay? And as we have already discussed, the one that is at the uh, at the second last, which says that corporate owned dedicated device, this is for Kosu, right? So I'm going to click on that and uh, which is going to open up the token for me. So it opens up the token. I'm going to go into the token section and then I am going to click on show token. So this is the part wherein the QR code displays. So now I have a, I'm going to open the device which has the camera on and I am going to scan it. We just have to like do it for I think three or four seconds when the camera is going to detect it and it is going to start the enrollment. So if I can hold it properly, only if I can hold it properly. Uh -uh. Okay, so I was able to finally scan it and once you scan it, this is the first page that opens up which says that to continue setting up your device, the first thing that needs to be done is the device needs to be encrypted. So I'm going to click on encrypt and then if the device is not already encrypted, well, in this case, the device won't be because I just did a factory reset. I'll have to click on encrypt. The device needs to be plugged in and it needs to be charged to at least 80%. So I'm going to click on encrypt. The device is going to restart as a part of encryption process. And then we will reconvene. So as you can see, the device is restarting now. Okay, so the encryption is done. The device boots up. It gets connected to the internet. I mean, to the same network it was connected to before. And then now the setup of work uh, work profile, it continues over here. You can see it's saying that installing the admin app. Okay, so it's installing the application. We will see what that application is later on. Okay, let me just place this. Okay, this is better. All right, so it's saying it's setting the device owner now. So you will see that whatever we are seeing over here, this is in accordance with uh, the screenshots that we saw, right? the screenshots that we saw and now it is asking us to uh, accept the EULA. So I'm going to scroll all the way down, click on agree all and then click on next. And then you see that the device is, it says that updating device, it will update the Google Play service. It will make sure that uh, everything is up to date. Over here it says that downloading Google Play Store and then it will update the Play Store. It will do all those things. Okay, it's still going on. Now it says that downloading the play service, it's at 0%, so probably it will take a couple of minutes. Okay, so now I think we are almost there. It says that uh, finishing updating the device, it took about two minutes. Let's see how, how much longer it has to take. So now it says that applying your organization's policies. So I believe this is one of the times wherein the device is getting, the device is enrolled and we'll check in the portal and the policies are coming down to the device now. So I just checked in the portal as well. I'm able to see the device in the portal as enrolled. So uh, I, I'm not going to switch the screen now. Once once the setup is done, then probably I will move the camera over to the portal and show you guys how it is looking and what other setup I have done at the portal end. So one thing obviously is I had to create the Kosu token, but other than that, there is some other things that I had to configure. So I'll just show it in a moment. Okay, and the device automatically comes to the desktop screen or the home screen. And over here, you can see that it has Play Store, contacts, phone, applications, all these things. If I go into the apps, I can see uh, 
it has all these things as well right so i hope that you are able to see it okay i hope it's clear enough all right so uh, uh, uh we are not going to do anything i am just going to leave it here and then i'm going to show you what happens on this device automatically so over here it says that shortcut to let me just scroll down and see what it said uh, it said that microsoft intune uh, there, there's an application which got installed on this device and over here you can see on the right hand side the intune app got installed on this device automatically i'm not going to touch this device anymore uh, i'm going to just show you the prompts that automatically come to the device in 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 stages and uh, Please remember, the intent is this device is going to be used for KOSU. That is a kiosk device, right? Not attributed to any user. Okay. So as of now, this is not a kiosk device, right? There are so many things that you can see. You can see the settings, the contacts, the phone, my files, the Play Store. But this is not really a, a kiosk device yet. So I'm not going to touch the device. As I said, uh, I am just going to wait and then let's see where the device takes us and we just waited for a couple of seconds and you can see that automatically the chrome application got installed on this device i did not touch the device automatically the chrome application came down to the device because i'll show you guys that later on that chrome was deployed to this device as required so and so was managed home screen so you see that the second application um, yeah the second application which is managed home screen that is down in the device as well again i am not going to touch the device well unless i have to unlock it so in which case i can't really help okay so i had to just unlock the device and even if i did not unlock it you can see that it gives us a prompt saying that allow managed home screen to access this device's location irrespective of whether i click on allow or deny it doesn't matter i just click on allow and then you can see that we are at a screen wherein there is only Chrome application at the page, right? There is no other application. And if I press the home button, if I press back, if I press minimize, nothing happens. The only option that I have is opening the Chrome browser and then making use of it like a kiosk device. So I can just set it up or if I want, I can just go directly go to the Instagram and start start uploading my beautiful pictures or I mean the, the point that I'm trying to make is we just had to wait for around three to four minutes and after that the device automatically became a kiosk device the device is now in a locked down state and I can make use of chrome the way I want to but other than that there is nothing else that I can do I cannot I cannot exit Chrome. I mean, I can just come to the home screen, but there is nothing else in the home screen, right? Uh, there is just the Chrome application and I cannot even change the Wi-Fi. If I scroll from top, I cannot even see the notification. I cannot do anything. Just one thing that I wanted, that I also wanted to show you, if I uh, tap on the back button for about 16 times, then this page opens up. And the significance of this is if I want to exit the kiosk device, right? If I want to exit the kiosk mode. So over here, you can see that there is this uh, launch Microsoft uh, Intune application. I can launch this application and I'm sorry, not this one, the first one. So let me just go there again, tap 16 times and then launch the Android device policy app. I can click on that. If I want to run a sync, I can run a sync from here. And if I click on policies, I can see the policies coming down over. It says that five apps available and it says that if you want to check for an update, you can check for an update from here. So not much. I mean, you also have the option of exiting the kiosk mode. So for that, again, there was another option. Again, I'm going to click on this for 16 times. And then there is that option which says that exit kiosk code and logs. If I click on logs, it's going to show you the logs over here. Not much to see. You have an option of uploading it as well. And it gives you the incident ID. You can reach out to your Microsoft partner and have them uh, trace it from PowerLift. And there is an option which says that exit kiosk. So if the admin has set this option only then the end user will be having an option of exiting the kiosk mode. He has to enter a password. One, two, three, four is what I set. 
and now you can see that I'm I have exited the kiosk mode right and now you can see that the only thing that it has is if I go to more apps I can see it has the uh, Chrome, Intune and Managed Home. So what, what is the significance of Managed Home Screen then? So this Managed Home Screen application, what it does is it suppresses all other application and gives you that uh, kiosk mode experience, right? Otherwise, I mean, this is also an alternative if you want it in this way. This is also in a way a kiosk device because there is nothing much to it. It just has a Play Store which we can block it and you can see that all the other thumbnails are not present and uh, it has the Chrome application in tune and my files. But the only thing to this is, uh, well, this is not exactly looking like a kiosk device because, well, I mean, there are so, so many other things that the end user can see. And I believe he can, yeah, he can see the notifications as well and he can change or disconnect the Wi-Fi. Therefore, I mean, the way to do it is, uh, we are going to deploy the managed home screen and then once we deploy the managed home screen uh, therefore we can deploy the managed home screen and once we deploy the managed home screen we can suppress all the native applications okay so let me just pick up the camera again and then take you back to the portal and let me just show you the settings that i have done in the portal which resulted to this so i am at the devices and over here the first device that you see that is the kosu device and you can see in the third column it says that compliance is not evaluated and the os is android dedicated so in case of fully managed or Kobo, you will be seeing it says Android fully managed like the last one. But in this case, it says that Android dedicated thereby meaning that the device is a Kosu device. Okay. And you can see the last check-in which is of now and enrolled by user that is nobody because the device is not attributed to a user. Okay. So if I click over here, I have an option of doing a wipe, a delete, a remote log, a reset and restart you will see that I don't have an option of doing a sync from the portal, okay? So now let me just tell you guys that how did the device become a kiosk device? By scanning the QR code, is that the only setting that we needed to do or is there anything else that we have to do? So the answer is there is something else also that we have to do. And what is that? We have to push a kiosk profile. I mean, obviously there has to be a place wherein we are determining which application is going to run in the device and which is not, right? In my case, it was running with the Chrome browser, right? So there has to be a place where we make this selection. So the first thing, what we need to do is we need to create a group okay so what I did was if I go into group if I go into all group there is a dynamic group that I have created called Kosu let's just check the membership of this group so if I go into the dynamic membership rules what it does what it says is any device which is enrolled by a profile called Kosu should be a part of this group okay so my device, which just now got enrolled, it which profile did it get during enrollment? When I say profile, I mean the token. So if I go into corporate owned devices, it got this token, right? Kosu. So let's just say that uh, I've got two. Uh, so let's just talk about this use case. Let's just say that I've got two, I've got two devices. Both are going to run as kiosk. In first device, I want. I wanted to run with Chrome application and in the second I wanted to run with Outlook application. So how do I do it? So what I'll do, I'll create two different profiles over here. Both the profiles will have different names obviously and have different tokens. Okay. So, and I'll be creating two different groups. So I'll be coming into the group section. I'll be creating two different uh, dynamic group. The first group will be having the membership rule as the name of the first token. The second will be having second token. So what this does is any device which is enrolled using this token or using this uh, group will be uh, will be a part of this. Okay. So uh, 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 if I go into members, it should show me the device. Yes, it shows me the device. And uh, you see that the device does not has a real, I mean, a good name. I mean, this is the way it is. I mean, it shows you, I believe that's the serial number or the device ID. I'm not sure. Let's just check that out. Let's just check what's the device ID of this device. So the way you check the device ID is you go into all devices, you go into the device 
and then over here at the top you see an id that is the intune id intune device id there are two ids as we have discussed intune id intune device id and azure id device id uh, and uh, this is where you see it and uh, if you want you can see it at the top also over here okay and uh, all right so uh, 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 so i have we what we have done until now is we have created a group but where have we used it well obviously the first thing that we need to do is we need to go to client apps and apps over here and i need to deploy the chrome browser to that application so i am going to go into google chrome and over here if i go into properties and if i scroll to the very down you can see that uh, uh, uh okay i think i just removed the assignment so obviously the chrome application needs to be assigned to the group that's the first thing and the second thing is once that is done if i go into device configuration i i would show you that there is that kosu profile that i have made and if i go into that kosu profile if i go into the properties if i go into the settings if i go into the de dedicated device settings this is the place wherein i make that selection that what application is going to run what application is not going to run in the device so the first thing that i select is multi app and then i select uh, managed home screen google chrome and then the android device policy application which we are using to sync the uh, sync the apps in the device sync the policy and then the virtual home button uh, swipe up i have selected that leave kiosk mode i have selected it as enabled if you select not configured then the user cannot leave the kiosk mode the only option of removing the kiosk mode is you will have to reset the device again or remove the policy from the portal and that's the password to leave the kiosk mode okay there are other settings as well like setting a custom screen saver image and all that you might as well uh, take a look over it but i mean th this is the setting which is taking effect okay so this is how a kosu device is this is how a kosu device works and as you as, as you saw that there was that uh, multi -a multi app kiosk mode is what we selected right so the device can run with multiple op applications in our case it was a chrome and the intune device policy app and the managed home screen app i could have selected a couple of other applications as well but i mean for the sake of this demonstration i hope that this makes sense that how we set up kiosk and how it is supposed to work right so guys now what we are going to do is kobo or company owned business only uh, so i mean there are two ways again i'm going to use the same device so what i did was i uh, went into the portal and click on clicked on delete from the portal for the device this is going to delete the device entry and it is equivalent to doing a factory reset of the device manually or if it is a fresh device you are setting it up for the very first time then the same thing needs to be done you'll have to go to the device and then once you power it on for the very first time at the language screen you have to tap for the f f tap for four times and then it is going to open up the qr code reader right so the device is starting up again for the very first time and then it might tell us to encrypt it again given that we have done a factory reset of the device again and then we will follow the same process and then we will scan the kobo code this time okay so the device is at again at the startup screen now where it tells us to select the language and location so i'm going to tap on it for four times and then it says that scan the qr code i mean it will it's going to install the qr code reader I'm going to connect to the Wi-Fi. Okay. So the process is the same. The only thing is this time we are going to scan the code for Kobo and not for Kosu. And then we'll see the difference. Okay. So now, uh, 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 again, let me just try and do the same thing. So I am going to... Yeah, I know this is stupid, but uh, okay. So uh, 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 I am going to go into Microsoft Intune and then uh, I, I'm going to go into Microsoft Intune and then uh, 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 device enrollment, Android enrollment. And this time I'm going to go to the last one, corporate owned fully managed user devices. And then this is the QR and I am going to scan this QR code and then we are going to see what happens next, okay? So, uh, uh, uh. 
Okay, so now it's telling us to encrypt the device because obviously we did a factory reset. So I'm going to click on encrypt and then the device is already plugged in. So I'm going to click on encrypt device and then select this option and then encrypt device. The encryption is going to start now. The device is going to restart a couple of times and then uh, we are going to wait it out. Okay, so the encryption is still underway and then we are going to give it some time here. So it says that Android is starting and then okay all right so the device comes up connects to the wi-fi i just have to click on next and then it says that downloading the admin app and uh, 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 this is not a kiosk so you will be able to see more options when the device is enrolled but the device is being enrolled as fully managed in this case okay so now it says setting the device owner and I have to keep on unlocking it. Really sorry about that, guys. Okay. And then this is the end user license screen. So I'm going to scroll all the way down, click on I agree, and then next. Okay. So it's again going to update the devices like it was in the previous case. downloading the Google Play Store so it comes to the Google screen uh, the Google Chrome screen first so I'm going to click on continue and then next I don't really want to sign in right now unless I really have to well obviously this is a, a Kobo device which is affiliated to a user right so obviously the user has to enroll the device okay so I believe the web version of company portal is opening up if I let me just see what happens if I click on cancel I just clicked on cancel it says that can't set up the device therefore that part is mandatory I'm clicking on sign in again and probably the chrome browser will open up again and it will tell me to sign in wherein I will uh, sign into the device using my username and password okay the chrome browser opens up again I just wish to see what happens if I don't really sign at the very first time. So let me just enter my username and password. So uh, 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 I'm going to use GRAGS at the rate nugget labs dot on Microsoft dot com. And then the password. Okay, never, yes, okay, so I'm logged in, not authorized, oh come on, I'm really sorry about this guys, let me just fix this, let me just log into this device, okay. Okay, so I was able to log in, I was just entering the incorrect password, it says that click here to continue, and then, uh, 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 alright, let's see here. This is the place wherein the enrollment of the device is happening. So yeah, that's that's quite a mandatory step. So you have to enter the username and password. And then over here it says that, so this is the kind of prompt you will be seeing in case of Kobo. So it says that set up your work. So these are the three steps that you need to perform. First is install work apps, then register your device, and then you will be ready. So the first thing that we need to do is click on install over here, which is going to install the Microsoft Intune app, okay? So it's installing it right now. Uh, I mean, it will download it first and then it will install it. So we just have to wait it out here. Okay, so it's installed. I'm going to click on next here. And then it says that install work apps is done. Now we have to register our device. So I'm going to click on start. And then uh, the Microsoft Intune app tells us to sign in. We are already signed in. Uh, I mean, we entered our username first, so I think it's only going to ask us to enter the password now. Okay, so are you trying to sign into Microsoft Intune company portal? Yes, I am. I'm going to click on continue. And then, uh, 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 let's see here. Okay, so uh, it says that I set up everything about Intune, get started. Okay, register your device. Okay, I'm going to click on next. All right.
right register your device is done choose device category so i've selected a device category when i in the, in the portal so i'm going to click on let's just say hr and then okay and then done here and then you are ready to work okay so i'm going to click on done and then let's see okay so i'm at the home screen now uh, uh, uh. let me see here apps i go into apps okay so if i go into the company portal now and then let's see how it looks okay so it says that if i open the company portal it says that you should actually company portal has actually moved to the microsoft intune app so it tells me to open the microsoft intune app here and then everything is the same here in this case uh, uh, uh. all right let me see what else okay what else is there uh, uh, uh. so it's showing all the devices that i have enrolled using this device this is my device that we're talking about i can run a sync from here and then let me just show you guys how the device looks at the portal end and uh, guys we also have the obviously have the option of installing an application from the managed play store also so if i go into the google managed play store and i click on the outlook application so obviously the outlook application uh, shows up because it has been approved so if i go back you can see it's only showing the applications approved by the admin outlook being one of them so if i click on microsoft outlook outlook downloads and installs and if i go into the home screen i i mean uh, if i go into the uh, desktop screen if you'd call it i can see that microsoft outlook is also installed now you will see that in this case there is no briefcase icon because there is no personal container right so it doesn't make any sense to provide a briefcase icon because everything is corporate container so that briefcase icon is actually there to make that segregation between personal and corporate since everything is corporate here it doesn't make really sense to have any briefcase icon in this case right okay so now if i come to the portal you can see the last uh, device which is there enrolled at uh, 16th of march this, this is today's and over here it says that android fully managed right and the naming convention is same as in case of kosu right and in this case you can see that uh, primary there is a user attributed to the device right and the device is compliant in the previous case you were seeing that the compliance was unknown and there was no user affiliation with the device right okay guys and now we are going to do an android enterprise enrollment okay so we have a company portal application downloaded uh, 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 but i'm going to sign into it for the very first time and we're going to do android enterprise or android for work enrollment okay so gre -G greg s at the rate everything about sorry about intune.com the password and then, and then you'll see that typically what you see what we actually saw in the presentation as well that a different work container will get created which will be encrypted so uh, during the course of this enrollment you, you would have seen that it did not ask us to encrypt the device that is because i encrypted the device beforehand okay so now it's saying that this is what everything about intune is going to access create work profile activate and then update so i'm going to click on begin this is what they can see and they cannot see the admin so they can see the call history and web history and all that uh, they cannot see the call history web history location emails text messages however they can see the model the serial number and all those things So now it says that it is setting up the work profile. I agree. And then I click on next and then OK. It says setting a work profile. This is where this is why it uh, displays with that briefcase container, right? Because you're doing Android Enterprise. However, in, in case of Kosu and Kobu, as we saw, it did not show us any briefcase container, right? Because everything was corporate. There was nothing personal in the device. So we are going to give it a moment here and at any point it should yeah okay there you go all right so it's saying that please wait we are momentarily going to launch it so let's just give it a moment and there you go
okay so the work profile is created i'm going to click on continue it says registering your device adding your device to the company portal Okay, so I'm really sorry about those last uh, 13, uh, I mean, 30 seconds or so. The volume was not there, but what I was trying to show you guys is that uh, if in case of Android Enterprise, you saw 9 for work in Outlook application when they were downloaded from the App Store, from the Play Store, they were having that briefcase icon right next to it. We don't have that in Kosu or Kobo because we don't need that segregation. That briefcase icon is to show this is that this application is in a different container. In Kosu or Kobo, there is only one container, right? So it is to be understood. And I was also showing how to collect company portal logs from a device, okay? So for this device, if I check in the portal, this is a device, you can see that this, this doesn't have the serial number or something. This has the following naming convention, which is uh, the name of the user underscore uh, the name of the user who enrolled the device underscore Android for work underscore the uh, timestamp. Okay, the device is compliant. Over here, it shows Android work profile. And uh, over here it shows the last check-in. It's attributed to a user, and uh, you, you uh, yeah, it's attributed to a user over here. Okay. So and then if I am pushing any policies, any app configuration, app protection, everything can be pushed down. Compliance, everything can be pushed down to this device, right? Okay. All right, I guess that is pretty much it, guys. I know that there was a lot of information in this, but I hope that I was able to show you, I, I was able to give you a thousand feet overview of what Android enrollment is, the different ways to do it, how to do it, which one to use when, and the various differences between each of them. So that next time when we go out to enroll an Android device, we know that which one to use, and we know on what basis the segregation is made and on what basis uh, this determination has to be made. Okay. So that's pretty much it guys. I hope that this has been informative for you. I would like to thank you for viewing. This is your friend Saurabh Sarkar.